Right now, 18 minutes after, fans of sci-fi well remember Hal the Talking Computer from the film 2001. Well, reality is a step closer to science fiction with Apple Computer's new developed program that allows its computers to understand and respond to spoken commands. And for a first look at this new technology, joining us are John Scully, the chief executive officer of Apple, and Kai Fu Lee, the inventor of Apple speech recognition technology, and also with us this morning, Casper the computer. Nice to have all three of you here. Thank now, you, some people might say, Mr. Scully, come on, there are other computers that, that do recognize voices, and I think even synthesize voices, but how's Casper different? Well, John, this is the first time we've had a computer that can handle continuous speech the way we're having a conversation now. It's also speaker independent, which means it can recognize you or me or Kai Fu or anyone else. You have to train it to, yeah. for, to one And voice. it works on a personal computer. This happens to be a Macintosh we're running it on. That's kind of amazing. How does it do that? Well, there are two breakthroughs in here. One is speaker independence, which means we train it on thousands of speakers, so it learns what English sounds like from a variety of speakers. Ah. And secondly, we, ha we have enabled it to um, recognize continuous speech from a trillion sentences. A trillion different sentences? Yes. All right, now we're going to give you, go ahead and turn it on. We're going to give a little demonstration. I should point out, too, though, that this is not available yet. This is a prototype, and it'll be available in, what, a year or two? In several Sometime years, we year. think we can turn this technology into products. All right. Casper, good morning. Good morning, America. And good morning, Joan. Please welcome the Chairman and CEO of Sinovation Ventures, Dr. Kai Fu Lee. Thank you very much. It's such a great pleasure to be here. You just saw a demonstration of Casper 27 years ago. And shortly after that demonstration, we got a call from Paramount. <laughs> Which is why Casper's descendant is now called Siri. <laughs> But back then, uh, speech recognition and artificial intelligence in general was very, very fragile. We even had a person with a manual switch in the back in case the system failed. Uh, but AI has gone a long way, and it's my strong belief that uh, artificial intelligence is at the frontier of humanity if we make the right decisions and take the time deliberately to make AI work. And I'm going to show you now some AI technologies from today. These are not demonstrations. They're real products uh, in the marketplace that uh, my company invested in in China. So we're going to show you uh, demonstrations that begin with big data. So in China, we don't have car, uh, credit cards or cash anymore. Mobile payment is everywhere. And mobile payment enables not only very fast and easy payment, but also uses data collected to make very smart financial targeting and instruments. Now we're also seeing uh, artificial intelligence working in the warehouse. This is doing things that could be used as a picker for the likes of Amazon and Alibaba. Uh, in the warehouse, moving items around instead of having people. And uh, it's able to pick up arbitrary objects without breaking them. And of course, autonomous vehicles, uh, including the first autonomous taxi in China, is one of our portfolio companies. And China's building brand new roads that will intelligently talk to cars and make the possibility of AI within <clears throat> making AI possible uh, with, within um, a, a smart city. And here is an AI rapper. <laughs> it's rapping in Chinese. You probably won't get it. But, <laughs> but, the, but the most exciting thing is this rapper, AI, it can rap on any topic that you provide the topic. And then it writes the song. And it was written by 10 students. And finally, I want to talk about AI for good, uh, for AI for healthcare, and most importantly, education. Many of you think of China as a prosperous country that's very wealthy and, and um, in technology advanced, but actually uh, many parts of China are very poor. We're seeing here uh, students who live in the poorest part of China who have to walk one to one and a half hours to school. And they're not privileged to good teachers that are available in America or in urban China. So AI technology plus video conferencing is now connecting rural schools to top teachers who are teaching from Beijing. And using video conferencing technologies, a great teacher like this one can teach a 1,000 kids at the same time with a clicker interface. And the teacher will get hints and clues about students. Uh, their names, uh, where they're falling behind. And also, the schools can use 
use AI to grade exams and give homework assignments, grade homework assignments, and you can see this can be a very engaging experience that will dramatically um, break down the barrier of education to those who need it. So we're very excited to be a part of bringing this technology to the mainstream. So how does AI work? The biggest breakthrough underlying AI is something called deep neural networks. And deep learning, or also known as deep learning. Uh, and deep learning works by taking one single domain, huge amount of training data, essentially no human intervention, and comes to its own decision as to uh, what decision to make, what predictions to make, or what classification to make. All you need is a huge amount of data. Of course, it only works in one limited domain. So let's take a real example. Let's say we wanted to teach this neural network how to talk like someone. What we need to do is collect a lot of speech from that person, and then it learns to do that, as you'll see. It's a great thing to build a better world with artificial intelligence. And in other languages, maybe? <laughs> so you probably didn't know. Not only does his granddaughter speak fluent Chinese, so did he. But, but of course, that wasn't President Trump talking. That was artificial intelligence through deep learning. And that capability has been expanded to many, many domains. Uh, domains such as game playing, natural language understanding, taking standardized tests, even doing radiology examination and healthcare applications. AI is doing a better job than people in these individual application areas. And that's very exciting. While AI is not at any, in any means threatening humans or at the level of human intelligence, AI is becoming a platform on which many applications can be built. And in that sense, I think of AI as the new electricity. Uh, just like electricity, it empowers lots of applications, many of which, which we have not imagined. And just like electricity, in a number of years, it will be something we can't imagine living lives without it. And with that platform and applications built, Pricewaterhouse estimated that AI will create $15.7 trillion of net incremental GDP to the world in just the next 11 years. And that will come in applications from internet to business to perception, computer vision, speech recognition, to autonomous AI that can move and manipulate like people. The development of these technologies will take time, but in the areas of industries that they will disrupt, it is unbelievable. It's essentially every imaginable industry. Um, some will come through disruptions with an AI company changing an entire industry. Some will come through infusion, that is a traditional company embracing AI first to win the market. And those who do not will, will perish. So that is the power of AI. And AI, unlike electricity, AI has four big uh, accelerators that will make the adoption much faster than electricity. First, there's not one superpower country in the world, um, but two, US and China, pushing AI forward. Secondly, there are great internet giants who are training tens of thousands of AI engineers with large amounts of data. Thirdly, there are AI funds such as ours, but also the much larger $100 billion SoftBank fund that is pushing AI forward compared to Thomas Edison who had to go to JP Morgan to borrow money. And then lastly, AI is becoming a platform. The programming of AI is becoming easier and it's going to be commonplace over the next 15 years. Any engineer can program AI on the cloud and that's unlike a, uh, electricity, which took many decades to build, build out the electrical grid. So the opportunities are huge, and we can envision that over time, AI will go from a rocket science into B2B technologies and gradually into mainstream that every engineer can use it and every business will embrace and infuse it. And companies will get exceptional uh, value creation through cost savings, through efficiency, through new applications, and it will make a huge uh, financial benefit, so perhaps to the point that we will make a big step towards eradicating hunger and poverty with that $15.7 trillion. But many of you are probably thinking there are big issues with AI. What about privacy, security, job displacement, or wealth inequality? Let me spend one or two minutes on each. Privacy is an issue we hear a lot about. A lot of news have focused on 
companies that have not done well to protect personal data and information. And a lot of people, including uh, Tim Cook, asked for more regulations. And certainly, regulations are needed to prevent the most egregious misuse of data. However, we should not stop at thinking about this as a regulation issue, because usually, uh, we are at our best. We technologists are, are at our best when we're challenged with solving technology problems with better technology. For example, uh, there are technologies like homomorphic encryption and federated learning that essentially protect one's data while still ena enables it to be used for AI Im improved convenience. And while we think about GDPR um, popping up windows for us whenever we visit European websites, that, that will bring back memories of when computer viruses were a big issue. We didn't ask each individual user to go fix the PC registry. Uh, what happened was technologists, one, they developed computer security software that safeguarded each user against uh, possible virus attacks. So we can imagine a slider that might give us each individual a choice of having more security or more convenience. And each person should have his or her own choice. <clears throat> Another example of possible security and technology is in the area of um, uh, deep fakes. We just heard that deep fake uh, emulating President Trump. There's another example of uh, video with President Obama that you probably can't tell the difference. Um, and there are also new algorithms, new, new ways to attack AI by putting stickers on the face to full face recognition and to attacking parameters in the system. These are all things we humans are unable to solve. We cannot tell the difference between President Trump and AI Trump or President Obama and the AI video President Obama. Only a forensically enabled AI algorithm can do that. So I think it's very, very important that we think about um, using technology to attack technology misuse. For every misuse, there can be a better solution using better technologies to address both privacy as well as security issues. What about job displacement? Many people would have you think AI would replace all jobs. But I'll tell you, there are at least two big things AI cannot do. One is creativity. Uh, the other is compassion. And by compassion, I really mean human-to-human -human connection and trust. And we just don't think robots can be our teachers or doctors or nurses. So on the one hand, we face serious job displacement issues because AI can do a lot of routine work, such as uh, customer service, telemarketing, uh, basic accounting, uh, as well as um, dishwashing, fruit picking, and factory and assembly line jobs. Uh, so there is a serious displacement issue. But those are for the low compassion and low creativity aspects. But think about the future of a scientist. Enable with AI tool, a scientist can invent many more drugs, bring benefits to humanity. Think about the future of doctors. Enable with a powerful AI diagnostic engine, the doctor can provide the compassionate touch and care to the patients, increasing the patient's chance of recovery, while the AI analytics does a better job of diagnosis. So we think there are aspects of displacement, there are aspects of symbiosis. But nevertheless, it does present major issues to businesses and governments. I, I think while unemployment numbers are at an all-time low, we have to be recognizant that while many jobs may be created by AI, those jobs may not easily be filled by people who are displaced in routine jobs. So just because there are more jobs available doesn't mean that people are ready to take them. Because if AI could create a routine job, AI would just do it itself. So, we have to really invest in training. I think governments really need to think about uh, education, uh, training, um, and also changing the society belief about compassionate work, that it's something we really excel at and that uh, robots cannot take over. So that currently, a lot of the compassionate jobs, such as the two million additional healthcare service jobs, are not being sought after because they don't pay well and they don't have the social status. These are things uh, society, governments, and companies have to change. And also, I think business leaders really need to think about the long term. Don't just think about your responsibilities to your shareholders, but think about responsibilities to employees and to the society. Uh, business leaders should not just think about AI replacing jobs, but think about how to retrain employees so that they can take on another job, even if it's at another company. 
and, and also the future of um, employment, hiring, training, uh, are all issues business leaders should think about in the longer term. The last of the four issues is inequality. Inequality within societies, between individuals, between companies, and also between countries will become a huge issue. While China and US become AI superpowers, many other countries may not be in such good shape, especially the countries with large population and not a strong technology base. And what should those countries do? STEM education and also think about other service opportunities, but also what should the US and China do? As AI superpowers, I think they shoulder more responsibility to help bring the world along. Also, if we think about the future of AI for good, I'm a strong believer that um, we, um, as humans, really want to move and pivot and tilt the balance of artificial intelligence towards longer term, greater good for mankind. And I think we've seen that while there are big issues, they can be addressed with technical and other solutions. And I also think if we think of, go back and think about every technological revolution, each one has eventually produced a lot more good than bad. And I think with that conviction and that faith, we have to do things that will accelerate the adoption of AI. Things like um, encouraging entrepreneurship, building infrastructure, enabling trustworthy data collection, and training responsible AI professionals. I think with all these progress, we really can make AI work. Uh, AI is here to stay. And I think we need to rise up to the occasion and embrace AI. Thank you.